Hi everybody, my name is Sarah Leah. So glad you joined me again for the 21st letter of the alphabet, which is Shin. And I do love the Shin. Of course, I love all the letters. <laughs> um, anyway, so the Shin is, as I said, the 21st letter, the, sec the second to last letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And it has a numerical value of 300. It means um, tooth, which you can see a little bit from the shape of it. Looks a little like a tooth. <laughs> anyway, tooth, repeat, teach, and year. Um, and it makes a sound, well, it depends where the dot is on the shin. So if the dot is on this, and, well, whatever. It makes it sound like the sh, uh, and then if the dot is on the other side, it makes a, sh, a sound like uh, like the s in sat, or the sh in should. Oof, that's such a terrible word. Should. I should do this, and I should do that. Escape. Take that away. It means uh, shoulder. <laughs> means that sh in shoulder. Um, so anyway, uh, so the, um, so the shin, there's a lot of debate about what the shin, how the shin is constructed. So Kushner says that it's constructed of a vav on the right, a vav on the right, and a yud and a zion. And Haralik says it's a Zion here and a Yud Yud. And Ginsburg, I tend to go along with Ginsburg. He says that it is uh, three Vavs um, with the Yud on top, but then it could be three Zions also. So you need to decide for yourself uh, what it's constructed of. And to me, the Shin is a very happy letter for some reason. Um, uh, it, Shin is one of those Shat Nazgat's letters, uh, Shin, Ayin, Gimel, Nun, Zion, and then Gimel Tzadi, Shat Nazgat's letters that have little Tagin. Tagin are um, uh, made up of these little Zions. So, um, so anyway, so these three Zions come together to make like this crown. And uh, there's a wonderful story in Menahot 29B or A, I think it's B, uh, uh, where God comes down and fixes, fixes these. Moses goes up to heaven. He does that a lot <laughs> and um, in the Talmud. And so he, uh, he sees God affixing these tagin very lovingly. Uh, to each of these Shah Nazgat's letters. So I just love that story. I think it's just so cute. Um, and there's a great story also about, uh, which I've told before, but anyway, I'm going to tell it again about the Shin. Uh, there's a husband is uh, Aleph Yud Shin, and wife is Aleph Shin He Isha, and Aish. Um, and if you take the God letters out of those words, so if you take the Yud out of husband, it would be then Aleph Shin. If you take the He out of Isha, it would be again Aleph Shin. And Aleph Shin means fire. So if you take the God, the God letters out of your partnership or, um, then you have a lot of fire in your relationship because you don't have God in it. And you know, in my long life, <laughs> that has proved very true as I observed many marriages, including my own, uh, which has gone through that stage of the fire thing. <laughs> and we are past that now, thank you, God. So we are here. Oh, I forgot to tell you, if you want to, um, if you would like to draw, 
the letters or paint the letters, which I highly suggest. That's how I fell in love with them. I didn't start learning Hebrew until I was in my 40s, and, um, and so I started drawing them, and they started coming to me in meditation, which is how I paint them. Um, and they became alive in those meditations. So anyway, if you, um, if you get pen and paper or acrylics and paper or canvas or whatever you want to do, um, and just start playing around with the letter shin, and I will show you some of my shins now. This is one I did when I very first started in 97. Um, I don't know what I was thinking. I probably copied one. Um, but anyway, that's my first one. I don't make them like that anymore. Um, here's a shin. I went through a long period where I couldn't paint them straight up. <laughs> so they were all kind of lopsided. Uh, here's the first, I think the first one that I learned to paint straight up. And um, here's another one I did pretty much at the same time. And this one I, I call the Four World Shin. And i um, not sure how I came up with that. But the Four World um, Paradigm in Kabbalah is the world of action, Asiya, the world of feeling, Yitzhak, the world of creation, Bria, and the world of Hatzilut, the world of archetypes. So, um, there you go. And this is one of my more recent ones. I call it the Shadow Shin. As you can see, the other shin behind it somewhat. So now we're going to do a short meditation on the shin. And... Um, I just want to mention the um, the um, niguns. So a nigun is a, is a tune without words. A, what, did, what did Mitch used to say? A tune looking for words? <laughs> anyway, it's a tune without words. And um, and it can be a chant. So usually when I, what I do with the shin, sometimes, well, let me just go into meditation. Sometimes I ride it. Sometimes I sit in one of those little things with the dips with the, the yud on the top of my top of my head. And I think I do mostly a thinking or chanting meditation with shins. So anyway, you need to um, um, you can either think about the shin that you drew or painted or you can think about um, and you can see it um, my shin is red with pink on the inside pretty cool It was made of three scions. Well, for Pete's sake, that's what it should be made of. Three Zions. Each one each Zion is seven. Three times seven is twenty-one, I think. Well, that's not helpful actually. <laughs> three years. 30, three bobs, that's 18, 38, that's not helpful either. But it was yud yud, bob, then it would be, then it would be the 26th letter, name of God. I think, yeah, nobody said that. Anyway, I think it's made up of three Zions, or as Ginsburg says, 
three bars with yud on top, with yuds on top. So what I usually do is I chant Shalom. But you can do anything. You can go riding on it. You can talk to it. So just relax. You can walk around the shin, see what's on the back. <laughs> on the back, it's pink on the outside and a light on the inside. Makes a lot of this forever amuse me. Okay, so you can wiggle your toes and your hand and start coming back to the room that you're in. And I, want, I just wanted to say, which is totally off topic, that the most powerful prayer is the prayer of thanksgiving. Because when you ask the universe or God for something, you're not sure you're going to get it. But when you say the prayer of thanksgiving, you're already picturing it in your mind, the good outcome. So I was kind of doing that too when I should have been thinking about the shin. <laughs> anyway, um, I, can, I do this uh, many times one-on-one -on -one with people, either over FaceTalk or Skype or whatever. And um, if you would be interested in doing that with me, I would be delighted to hear from you. All my information on how you contact me is below and uh, below this video. Um, and also there's a, I just started a Hebrew letters website. Again, I had one for years, but this is a new one and it takes a very long time to put the artwork up. So. Um, it, um, it's called, it's Hebrew letters. It's H-T-T-P colon backslash backslash Hebrew letters. No, dub, dub, dub. So um, anyway, thank you for joining me today. And I look forward to hearing from you. And we can play with these letters. It's wonderful. These letters are so wonderful. Anyway, thank you so much for being here with me. I really enjoyed it, and I hope you did too.